the podcast discusses Warren Buffett's investing strategy and the importance of understanding the external factors that affect a company. Hey everybody, this is Phil Town. And this is Danielle Town. And there she is, my daughter, my lovely daughter. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm doing pretty good. We're, uh, we're here for the Invested Podcast, and uh, that's where we're discussing Warren Buffett strategy, Warren Buffett strategy and tactics. How the Ooh. best investors in the world, in my opinion, um, do what they do. So I like moving into strategy and tactics because we've spent mm. like seven years talking about the nuts and bolts and maybe we'll spend the next seven years talking about strategy and tactics. I'm into that. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's kind of where like the art comes in. Less science, more art, which is, I think, what we've been Man. talking about in this series on what I'm calling now the weather matrix. I don't know if you like that name. I think it's great. Uh, it's okay. a really cool idea. Weather matrix. Yeah. Well, I like it just fine. So for everybody who hasn't started at the beginning of the, the weather episodes that we've done, we've been talking about how when you're researching a company or maybe an industry or whatever, some area, there comes a point where that circle of competence that has led me to feel confident in reading and able to understand it and um, start to develop opinions about the moat and run the numbers, etc. Look at the people running the company. There comes a point where I then usually go, wait a second, I need to know more about what's around this company. What countries it in what stock exchange is it on what's yeah. its closest competitors what kind of company did it used to be what is its industry going to be like in the future what's its currency just all these sort of what i would consider to be outside of that circle focused on the just the company types of questions and pieces of information and that feels enormous I'm going to rephrase. Well, that's, that's the way we're talking about. That's why we're using the word weather, right? It's because it's the weather right. that this company is functioning in. Is it functioning in a sunny skies? Is it functioning in a tornado? What, yeah. What's going on all around this company? Exactly. That's, that's why we're, we're calling it the weather. Which is And to rephrase, good, good. I think it it is enormous. It's not just that it feels enormous. It is enormous. Like I could spend a lifetime learning enough to understand in every single possible permutation, a given company, but none of us can do that. Even people for whom this is their job. So I don't know if you could spend a lifetime. That's a bit of a stretch there, lady. It's a mega I mean, it might stretch. Feel like that just but because you think sort it of out. Like, mm, there's so much to learn. Yeah, but right? think it out. Because think I it mean, out. Some, but here's the thing: thinking it out means where do you draw the line? That'd be the first thing. Where do you draw the line? And the line is your circle of competence. That's yes. the line. But can and I just so explain why to... I said that? Okay, go. Okay. Because it's exactly about drawing the line. And the reason I do, it, yes, it's somewhat hyperbolic to say like you could spend a lifetime. But the full explanation is to understand Google, I might need to know about every single other company in the world. I need to know about the currencies. I need to know about the <laughs> economics. I need to know how the computer started. I need to know wait, what people wait, wait, used wait, to wait, use. Wait, wait I, a second. It's insane, right? But like, it starts to feel like that. So no. then you say the obvious line is don't do that. And that's ridiculous. And then, okay, so let's like draw, draw the line back to tech companies tech companies in America that are multinational, those sorts of things. And that's where the lines start to get drawn. Well, right? like, fair, fair enough. And then let's just look at Google for a second and say, okay, if you have to learn about all the tech companies and all of what's going to happen in the future and the whole uh, future experience for artificial intelligence and exactly. where that's going and is that going to break, then for most people, that's too hard. 
Exactly. And in fact, Warren Buffett draws a circle around or basically builds a wall cutting off all of the tech companies almost without exception. Just no tech company. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's because too unpredictable. those are too hard. Yeah, too hard. Mm -hmm. They're too unpredictable. So, which is, you're making a good point because we have to start someplace and starting someplace, as you say, could feel like, oh, 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 no matter where I start, I have to learn the whole world and that's too much. So I'm not going to be an investor. But and, and in fact, I know that sounds crazy to you, but to people who are not investors, that is how it feels. Yeah, it does. A hundred percent. Yes. But look at how you fix that. Start with a laundromat in your local town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Start with that. Start with a lemonade stand. Start mm -hmm. with something so small that you can get your head around it. I mean, if, yeah, exactly. if a public company is too big to start with, then don't start with a public company. Start with, okay, you know, my business is going to be to buy a Porsche car and then rent it at the track through the Joseph Corso company, because he's looking for cars to rent. And Joe will pay me 50% of whatever he gets for it. And he's getting $3,000 a day. And I can What a universal what example. My, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm narrowing down the world to this. It's exactly the opposite of what you just said. I know. The, a universal know. example would be the worst possible thing you could do. What you want is the smallest possible thing you can do. Yes. And yes. if you don't yeah. do that, you can get screwed getting hung up in, oh my God, I have to learn the world. But how yeah. hard is it to learn about what's the world of Porsche car rentals look like uh, at the track, at two tracks, Barber and Road Atlanta, two tracks, one company doing it, no competition, renting a car. Could that be a good business? And so you totally there you go. Right on. So then you learn the weather. What's the weather right. like for this? Right. Well, it's sunny from about April till November, literally. <laughs> and that's when everybody's racing their cars. So the first thing you need to know is this is not a year round deal. <laughs> okay. Or, okay. I mean, just think of the different businesses people have. What about the guy that rents his farm out at Sturgis, South South uh, Dakota every year to all these bikers who come out there and he's got a two week business. That's it. His moat is his location. Like he rents it for parking or he camping rents it or something? For, yeah, for camping, for concerts and okay, for got all it. of the got, you know, the commercial stuff that goes on. Okay. Two week business. Yeah. So, or if that's too hard, think about a business that involves just the house across the street that's for sale. Mm -hmm. And they're really, it's going through uh, a foreclosure and you could buy that at the right price. That might be a really good business. Mm -hmm. So you start with just narrow it down to a place where you can understand a few critical things, a few I tiny think critical things. That house example, which is perfect for starting to learn investing, is actually also perfect for thinking about the weather, I think, because we haven't mentioned that exactly. example before and I hadn't really thought about it. But because it's so familiar to most people, the concept of buying a house, even if you haven't done it, you can understand, okay, like, like we talk about the moat and stuff of a house, like the neighborhood, the town, the schools, um, those all contribute to, uh, to the moat, to the weather, there you go. but they also contribute to the weather. Exactly. And for, and for a lot of people buying a house is really scary because they feel they can't predict how that's going to go in the future. And so I think it's actually a really great case study to get comfortable finding the line of the weather, which is essentially what we're talking about with the matrix and all of our examples. Right like when do you stop researching the weather? 
Um, I, I think you've really hit on something here. Yeah. Honestly, if people are intimidated and afraid of being able to understand the environment, the weather that this house is in, in your own neighborhood, in mm-hmm. your own town, mm-hmm. stock investing is not for you. <laughs> you you will not be happy doing this. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's, investing in companies is more difficult than investing in a house across the street. Yeah, it definitely. Absolutely is. The, the, the number of things you need to know about that house across the street are very limited because, I mean, for example, we need to know about the management of a company. We need to know about the moat of a company and we need to understand the weather that this company's in. Okay. Well, the weather that company's in is your neighborhood. If you can't mm-hmm. figure out whether that's going to be good in 20 years or not, you know, is there any neighborhood you could figure that out about? Exactly. Right. I think that's the, that's the next logical question. Is there any neighborhood that would be something you feel confident enough in predicting that you would make an investment? There you go. And the way that, from personal experience, the way that I got there is by doing it, is by practicing the the process of going through the investment, which is why I wrote the book so that everybody else could follow along more easily than on this podcast. Right on. And right on. I think like the first time it's terrifying. The second time it's terrifying. The third time it starts to feel a little bit like, Hey, I've done this before. This is, there's a lot of similarities. I'm seeing same things pop up and that's how the emotional comfort gets built. Um, and I think that process is really important. So in a lot of ways, like this conversation about going through the weather is part of that in a way that we haven't really gotten explicitly into before. Oh, it's, it's a really, really interesting process. When we, when we were talking about the matrix, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, if you, what you're looking for is, um, a company that you understand well and one which is on sale. So that's what we would call the the uh, the buy box or whatever you call that, the buy quadrant. Or as a so way to decide high. when to put more time into a certain area, right? Yeah, really what you, really essentially if you're looking and saying, all right, I've got an area of my life in this case, my community I live in, Mm -hmm. that I have a very high understanding of. Mm -hmm. I know the schools are good. I know the taxes are low. I know it's good political environment, low crime, and people are moving into this neighborhood. It's probably going to be good for many, many years into the future. That's the weather that this house is in. And then, so I've got a very high understanding of that, which is one side of the matrix. And then the other side is, Uh, the value of of this house is quite high relative to the price of the house. That is for Mm -hmm. one reason or another, these people are bailing out on this house. Let's say it's a really older person whose wife had already died and he's too old and moving to an assisted living home. His kids don't help him at all. The place is very run down. It needs a new roof. It needs paint. The grass needs mowing. It's got all of this sort of, surface level problems Mm -hmm. that is preventing it from getting a normal price in the market. Mm -hmm. But the Um, dirt is good. But the dirt is good. It's a good location. I mean, it's right across the street from me. I mean, I like where I live. It's it's right across from me. So (laughs) I think the weather here is really good and the value relative to the price is really high. And that's high value or rather high basically on sale and I understand the business so this is this area of the matrix is that's where we want to stay that's where we want to buy stuff we're gonna we're buyers when we see that so the game that we're playing as well and we want to put more time into it right like this isn't a matrix of buy or not buy this is a matrix of understand the weather interested in know what is this a matrix of of knowing more about the weather <laughs> well we're on a continuum from very low understanding 
to very high understanding, okay? Can you go through the matrix so, just quickly, just sure. for people who don't have it in front of them? So think about this box, and it's divided into four other boxes, right? It's got a line down the middle and a line, a line vertically and a line horizontally through the middle of it. So it's got four boxes. And then you'd label the left side of this thing how really it's how well do I understand this? So it's called, un, we'll call it understand it. And the upper part of that understanding label is high understanding. And the lower part is low understanding. Is that, is that yeah, a picture? And, yeah. And this, I have written down its level of understanding currently, not ease yeah. of understanding. Right. Because it's not, how easy it's it not is. about it's whether it's easy or hard. It's about yeah. my current level. Yep. Right. So on that continuum, sort of vertically, you've got yeah. very high understanding at the top and very low understanding at the bottom. Right. So it's yeah. sort of like, OK, good. And then on the on the top, you have the value price ratio. So let's say that the value of the house is two times the price. It's two hundred thousand dollars for the house and it's selling for one hundred thousand. So the it's two the the value to price ratio would be two now if the value of the house was a hundred thousand selling for a hundred thousand and the value to price ratio is one and now, if the value of the house question. is fifty thousand hold on the value of the house is fifty thousand and it's selling for a hundred thousand then the value price ratio is 0. 0.5 so the higher the value point ratio the better the deal makes sense so yeah, that can that's does a continuum make sense. very high to very low and I have written down price divided by value, which I may have just Wrong. written wrongly. So you're saying it's yeah. value divided by price because then you get whole right. numbers, hopefully. Yeah, you get high high going down to low. Yeah. So you want okay. high value to price ratio. So what that means is that you've, and then you've got these boxes that correspond with high, 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 low, low, high, and low, low. So very straightforward, easy to, create little box and what we want is we want to be in the box that's high high and we'd Just like it to be as high as possible right we'd like here. it to be in the far upper left hand corner of the buy box so to your point that there's there can be work that goes on in the in this buy box it's because we may not have as high an understanding of this business as we'd like to have. We're pretty high on it. Let's say we understand it pretty well. I see that Chipotle Mexican Grill has a value of $700 a share and it's selling for 250. It's got a three ratio. I mean, holy smokes, three to one ratio. That's a really high value to price. But I don't know if I understand it completely. I really like burritos. It's 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 something I think I can understand a lot if I dig into it. I understand it plenty enough to know why people are going and get them because I love them and uh, you know, there are lines around the block. So I'm going to put that in the buy box. But I before I buy it, I'm going to get more information. Now, if I've it just so happens that I got deep into Chipotle Mexican Grill back in 2005, and I wrote about it in Rule One in 2006 that came out. Mm -hmm. And I sold it and I bought it back years later. So I see that, oh man, Chipotle Mexican Grill has um, E. coli going on in some of the restaurants. The price is dropping like a brick and it lit me up. I'm like, oh, holy smokes, because I have a very high understanding of that business, having owned it. Yeah, is it, is it, it's so great when all the previous research just comes right? into play and you're like it's almost like a gift of like here it's is like something that you know all about and you're like this here, is so easy have a, have a fabulous return and make a lot of yeah. money yeah. and of course what you do is what warren buffett says is you don't go outside when it's raining gold with a thimble you go out with a bucket you <laughs> load it up right so mm -hmm. that that says that there is a continuum around that but it it is only a continuum relative to how high your high knowledge is. Say that again. That's very different. Okay, it's it's a continuum of high level of knowledge. Like, 
I really know Chipotle Mexican Grill very well. Could I learn more about it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure, I could. But I already know it very well. How much more do I need to learn about it now in order to invest in it now compared to, let's say, five years ago? Yes. All right, I'm going to have to brush up. Yeah. Things might have changed dramatically. Who knows? Sure. Now, let's go to a different one. Let's go to Netflix for fun. So Netflix... I could say I have a relatively low understanding of. Okay. Yet, Netflix got hammered when, right after the COVID thing settled down, Mm -hmm. they didn't deliver on growing numbers of subscribers at the same time that Disney, Apple, uh, Google all started pushing to do their streaming and pouring billions into it. And the market bailed out on Netflix. And it went from 680 down to about 200. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing wrong with Netflix, look at that value price ratio, right? The value might be 600. It's selling for 200. It's a three to one value price ratio. Okay. It's immediately in the high level of value price ratio part of this, of this matrix, but I'm very low in understanding. So now I'm in the study box. Yes. So Ooh, that's I like what I that. Call the, study the study box. box. Ooh. What we said before was lots of time, but maybe worth it. <laughs> You're right. We'll just call it study. I like study. Study is pretty cool. So, to the point, the first thing I did was just check Amazon to see if there's any books written by the CEO or about the CEO. And sure enough, Reed Hastings had written a book all about Netflix and I'm like holy smokes I've got the whole story right here in front of me in 200 pages Mm -hmm. so immediately I start to study and what I'm looking for there is am I going to keep studying this or am I going to reject it as too hard and as I started to study it I started to realize this is not too hard this is cool I use Netflix all the time I have some connection to it I like it a lot. I like Reed Hastings a lot. I like the way they're running their company a lot. Very much of a, of a uh, meritocracy. It's magnificent meritocracy. And so, um, I have a lot of interest in this and learning more about it because it's such a cutting edge, cool thing. Hmm. So the studying resulted in me, first off, I'm not rejecting this. And as my continuum goes from low toward high, I'm getting to where I can start to see I might be moving into the buy box. Continuum of level of understanding, moving from low to high. It's starting to move up, right? So then I need to understand the weather. Okay, wow, the company looks really cool. Now I gotta understand the weather it's in. What's Apple doing? Yeah. What's Google doing? I feel like that's what we spent like five episodes talking about. We didn't call it the weather then. But, but we basically, that's it. what we were talking about was the weather yeah. and how yeah. that's a great example because it was, it was so difficult <laughs> to, I don't know, to know how much you needed to know. Incredibly difficult for me. I mean, yeah. I rejected it out of hand and you didn't and you no, were right. It's a, yeah. It's about a th- two and a half to one return right now after a couple of years. Yeah. So yeah, that's that. Um, so there's your study side. So on but, the but, left but side of this, talk about that though, because is, like the weather is so hmm. complicated around that company. How did you decide where to stop? Where's where was the line in that situation? Right. Um, so I have to confess that I'm aided by having some very smart analysts. Mm-hmm one of whom really, really, really dug into this thing deep and Mm -hmm. guided me through and sort of, so I had that huge advantage on something that was, you know, might've gotten to be too hard or just, you know, just how much about this do I really think I can learn? Yeah, because that's where I was for sure. Yeah, so I really got guided by, by Austin in particular. And um, which allowed me to do something really amazing, which is I got to put forward all of these inversions about it, all the reasons Mm -hmm. why it would be wrong to buy that company, which helped me understand it more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I went through the process of 
you know, here's, here's a reason not to buy it. Here's another reason not to buy it. Here's another. And those reasons are usually very visible yeah. in the world where a company has had an event. There's all the haters out there, not long-term haters, but just using the term like, I hate this stock. They're out there pitching their book. Like, I, I, here's all the reasons why I'm right. And anybody that buys this is crazy. Um, and so those are really quite fun to, to go through if you like the industry that you're looking at. And who, you know, really in a sense, who doesn't like the, the whole streaming world? I mean, it's really cool. It's completely oh, disrupting. It's fascinating. Everything. Yeah. It's, yeah, and it's, it's going to change so much in the next 10 years. It is indeed. And what, what Austin showed me was that my biggest concern about all of these other companies was overblown um, primarily because they have a lot of other things going on. They are not solely focused on this mm -hmm. market the way Netflix is. And as a result, um, they are going to have to respond with their streaming companies, with their streaming, uh, what, subsidiary, to the overall profitability of the company. They can't just go out there and lose money on this thing. And Netflix had a 10 year head start. And sure enough, I mean, absolutely what happened. Last year, all of these big companies just had screaming losses. And, and their boards were yelling at them and they just started pulling back. They one after the other pulling back away from pouring money into streaming at exactly the same time that Netflix was, which was already very profitable, started creating an enormous amount of cash flow. So right down the line about what, uh, what my guys were predicting would happen. And I had to say, I rode their coattails on this and, and just asked a lot of questions until I was comfortable. But I think that's a really useful point and method. So let's pause here and pick that up next time. Okay. And I do know, I want to tell everyone, I know I ended another episode saying that we were going to talk about the the no section of the matrix. And I haven't forgotten about that. Um, but <laughs> well, let's get to that. Let's get to that next time. Okay. Okay. So Thanks right now everybody. we're on the buy it and study it. And we're going to go to the other side of it. Next yeah, time. exactly. Which is, I think, where we left okay. off last cool. episode, too, somehow. <laughs> All right, well, we'll do it this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so Thanks, long, everybody. everybody. Time to go play. Bye.